We're going to take a look at the mode dial on top of the camera left and see what all of these shooting modes are. And uh, we'll start with the green mode over here, and that is the completely full auto, what I would call point and shoot mode of the camera. You can turn it into sort of a point and shoot by putting it on the green mode, and that means that you're not allowed to adjust any of the settings. And if you really just want to shoot quickly and probably get perfectly good pictures, you can go to the green mode. If you're not very experienced with the camera, go ahead and shoot in green. But as soon as you start to get some real feel for the way things work, you're not going to want to shoot in green anymore. And let's go over to the other uh, modes in the direction of the more advanced user modes over here. And the first is a new one for Canon here called Creative Auto. And what it is is sort of a hybrid <laughs> of, uh, of P, Program Auto, and Full Auto over here. A little, bit, a little bit different than either of them. What it allows you to do is that when you press the, uh, put it into Creative Auto and press the shutter button halfway down, an information screen comes up on the back, which we'll show you, and it allows you to quickly adjust many of the settings by using your multi-position controller, but only for that shot. And if you turn the camera off or change modes, it's going to get rid of those settings. So it's really just a, just a sort of a local adjustment of the way the camera is going to operate on the fly. And, but like I said, as soon as you turn it off or change modes, it's going to lose those settings. So uh, that's a new one for the, for the 50D here. Program Auto, my favorite home base setting. It is full auto, but it allows you to control all the functions of the camera. So if you don't want to do anything, put it in P, take pictures all day long. But if you want to go ahead and be able to adjust things, you absolutely can. And plus there's a slight difference from the fully green auto mode to P mode, and that is that in full auto green mode, the camera will bring its internal flash up automatically if it needs it. In program auto, that does not happen. Now this is called time value, but it's actually shutter priority. It's called TV, this is shutter priority, and this is where the camera will automatically adjust the exposure and allows you to go ahead and change the shutter in case you're taking sports and you want to come up over 250th of a second with your command dial. As soon as you press the shutter halfway down and the metering comes on, if you adjust the command dial in the front next to the shutter, you can go ahead and, and shift the shutter speed to a higher or lower speed whatever your preference is for that particular type of shooting. Yet the camera will automatically adjust the f-stop to compensate so that the correct amount of light is hitting the sensor in the camera and you get a good exposure. And AV, or the aperture value, or aperture priority, in this case traditionally called aperture priority, allows you to do the reverse. So you're going to be adjusting the f-stop of the camera, the iris of the camera, to adjust the depth of field and the amount of foreground to background that is going to be in focus vis-a-vis -vis the number of the f-stop. So if you go down to f2.8, that iris is open all the way in the camera. Of course, you're going to get a very shallow depth of field, but you bring it up higher, and you're going to get that wider depth of field. Remember that, of course, if you run out of room, in other words, you try to bring it up because you want a wider depth of field, and you're, you're not able to bring it up, and the cam camera's not able to adjust the uh, exposure to still take a good picture, you can always change that ISO, change the sensitivity of the camera to give you some more elbow room so that you can keep going and get that, that setup that you want for the particular picture. Now full manual over here allows you to adjust both the f-stop and the shutter speed by using your main and rotary, rotary command dials in the back so that you have complete manual control of the camera and it will show you the metering on the LCD, it will show you that such that you can get a perfect exposure, but this is like going full manual. That's why they call it manual. And it's also good for uh, nighttime shots with long exposures and such. ADEP here is an automatic depth of field setting that detects uh, what's in the foreground and what's in the background as far as important things in the image and tries to give you a, a depth of field corresponding to those, those items in the image. It's interesting if you have uh, if you have a group of people and some are closer and some are further, it'll detect which ones are back a little bit, which ones are closer, and try to adjust that f-stop to go ahead and give you that full range of depth of field you need to get everybody in focus in the image. And here's C1 and C2. Basically, this is two memory slots in the camera setting a custom user setting. And that means if you and another family member routinely use this camera and you have personal preferences that are different, this allows you to preset two complete sets of settings on the camera so that these two people, or just yourself, could have 
two different ways the camera operates. Say you always do architectural black and whites, and you want to set the camera up all the way for black and white with a sharper picture, and you know, et cetera, et cetera. You can put that in your C2 slot, and if you want it for uh, you know portraiture, and you're always doing a little bit softer on the sharpening of the image, and you're bringing the color level down a little bit, and et cetera, et cetera, you can put that in your C1 slot and register that. We'll show you how to do that in a bit. It's really, really quite handy. And here are your more automatic modes over here that you can select. If you're quickly getting to a portrait setting where you have to take some portraits and, and you're a little bit newer to the camera, you can throw this right into the portrait setting and it's going to really take care of those flesh tones. It's going to change everything just a little bit, a little bit softer and such for those standard portrait settings. And here's the landscape that's going to bring out those blues and greens of the sky and the grass and give you a really tack sharp, more sharper picture for landscapes. Here's your macro setting, the little flower when you're doing some exploring the world of, of close-up photography. Here's your sports setting that's making, making sure that it freezes the action for you. Here's night portrait where you're going to sort of blend a little bit of the ambient light and you're going to, you're going to blend a little bit of flash maybe and, and uh, it's going to make sure that things are all viewable, all seeable in the exposure. Remember that that's going to probably require you to hold the camera very, very steady. Tripod highly suggested. And your no flash mode over here. So I can tell you some of the best pictures I've ever taken have been with no flash when I should have used one in a dark situation. It might make a soft or slightly blurry, blurry picture, but content is more important than resolution, focus, or anything else. It, it, the content, movement, uh, the color, the light, everything, uh, the composition can really make a photograph extraordinary. And you may want to really experiment with not using the flash when you are in a low light situation. And there's that no flash position. Again, my home position, program auto. 99% of the time, I'm in program auto. So there's all your mode settings on the mode dial.